I'm here in a 2019 Volkswagen Atlas. The reason I'm test driving this, this is the last vehicles rolling off the lot. This is the last year they're gonna have the six year 72,000 mile warranty on this vehicle. Next year that goes away. So that's why I'm driving a 2019. I'm gonna tell you everything I know about this vehicle. We're gonna test drive it, find out what we like, tell you what we don't like, compare it to some other vehicles. Before I do that, make sure you subscribe to Blinker Fluid TV. There's a lot more to come. Visually, this is a nice vehicle. It looks, it looks good. You know, you've got your LED headlights up here. You've got fog lights down here. The grill, look, you know, it's not the sexiest grill in the world, but it's not too bad. This is a decent looking vehicle from the front. I actually like the side profile a little bit too. To go around to the back side of this vehicle. You know, I like, the, the look of this vehicle is pretty good. The back side, I don't love. It's a little boxy, it's a little, I don't know, it doesn't have quite that hatchback look to it, but you know what, if you can look past that, we can talk about everything else that we do like about this vehicle. Let's open it up. This is some decent cargo room back here. 20.6 cubic feet cargo room behind the third row. That's a good thing. You know, there's a lot of third row SUVs out there. There's a lot of competition. A lot of them have the third row literally right up against the back window and barely any room back here. So you want to have some room back here to store some things. Of course, you can pull these down and easily flip them down. I've got something back right there, so right now I can't do it. But these can easily lay flat and the other row can lay flat as well, the second row. All right, taking a look at that. Unfortunately, no push button here. There's four trim levels of this vehicle. You've got your S the SE, the SEL, and the SEL Premium. And of course, it also has an optional tech, tech package. From what I understand, the tech package is a heads-up display. That's pretty cool. Heads-up displays are starting to come out now. You don't see them in a lot of vehicles unless you're looking at luxury vehicles. So to get a heads-up display in, in this uh, price range of vehicle is interesting. Now there's a couple different uh, engine options. You've got the four-cylinder, two, uh, turbocharged two-liter four-cylinder. You've got two V6 options. You've got front wheel drive and all wheel drive options. Let's get inside. Take a look at what kind of legroom we have. First of all, these are nice seats. They're not cloth. That's a good thing. If you have kids, you understand you want to be able to clean these up easily. Room for three people here. There's also the optional captain chair. I think I kind of like the captain chair. Easy to get in and out for whoever wants to sit in the back row. Now this one seats seven. So again, three people here, two in the back, first two in front of seat seven. Yes, captain's here seat six. Leg room, good. I'm short, so obviously I don't have those long legs, but somebody that was taller could sit here pretty comfortably. I gotta say, this has really good leg room. Of course, you've got your USB ports here. That's important, you can't overlook that. Everybody needs to have that, and of course, uh, climate control for the second row. Let's uh, take a look up front. All right, getting in the front here. Let me tell you first impressions. The trim, it, it's it's okay. It doesn't pop out at you. It's got some satin metal here. It, you know, it's it's not a bad look visually. I just know from firsthand experience that after some use in this vehicle. This is going to get scratched up a little bit. It's not going to look too good. That being said, it's not bad. You've got room here for storage. Cup holders are important. I don't see cup holders back here for the second row. Shift control. You've got a lot of controls here for audio, your Bluetooth, your, looks like your cruise control is over here. But I'll tell you, the, the first thing that I looked at in this when I got in is this infotainment system. We'll turn it on here in a minute. We'll go for a test drive. But I like this, the in-dash infotainment system. 
and then just some analog controls up here. So, you know, you can control your radio, you can control some things up here, but I like the fact that it's in dash. Some other vehicles have it up here, and that can be a little obtrusive sometimes. It's nice having everything right here, but also you still have your knobs for some climate control here. Um, and my heated seats are here, ventilated seats, push button for all of that. All right here for the climate control USB port down here. Other vehicles I've seen have different uh, capabilities here. You can charge a, uh, you've got wireless charging there, That's, but this does not have that. That would be nice. Um, you've got your knob here for your different controls. The nice thing is it's easy to reach. You know, you can be driving, you quickly look down and see what, what mode you want to put it in. Don't want to put it in snow mode. Don't want to leave it in normal. Don't want to go to, into the mountains and do some off-road. So a lot of different options here and you can customize. I know there's an option to customize your off-road, your, your, uh, your all-wheel drive capability. You can customize it right up on the screen. So I really do like this in-dash infotainment system. Some vehicles, you know, are going to a much bigger one. Of course, Tesla's, you got, you know, 12 inch, 15 inch screens up here. But a lot of vehicles are still trying to say a little bit more simplistic. Have your infotainment system up on a screen here, but still have knobs to control different things. And so it kind of just depends which way you're going. Are you going with the way of the technology? Do you want everything on one screen? Do you want to have the knobs? I think for most people, we're still in that mode, at least for now, maybe 10, 15 years down the road, you won't have that option. But for now, where you're still learning how to use an infotainment system like that, it's nice to have a simple one here built into the dash. Again, it's not obtrusive, it's not in the way. I can still see, but I have my controls for my, my climate control knobs here. And man, I can feel that heated seats kicking in right now. I kind of like that because it's a cold day. Well. Let's go take it for a drive. Let's see how it is. How, you know, getting in and out. We already did that in the back, but uh, let's take it for a drive and see how it performs. So driving this vehicle, let me tell you what I like. Comfortable. Uh, seats, seats are quite comfortable. It has, you know, the steering wheel has, uh, it's heated. One of the things I noticed, and it doesn't really affect me so much, I'm a short guy but the bottom of it's cut off a little bit. So for a taller person that had tall knees, you would not you would, you could get in here in and out pretty easily and be able to steer. That's a good thing. One of the things I really like is this display in front of me. Everything is right here that you need. It's pretty easy to use. Having not driven it very long, I don't even really need a tutorial to use it. Um, because it's pretty simple. That's the one great thing about this vehicle, it's, it's, it's simple. So, on this display, you've got radio, media, phone, voice, on the other side, app, sound, car, menu. Everything's right there. Very easy to use, just push a button to change the channel, right? Very simple. I also really like that right below it are my climate controls. So, one button here, for the heated seats, which I'm using right now, it's cold. Ventilated seats right next to it. You can change the level of the heated seats. If they get too hot, you can turn it down. Just one push of the button. So everything is right here. And same thing for the passenger side. Their buttons are on their side of this front display here. I can control the, the heat, the climate for myself here. And uh, the other person can, can use their own climate control, or we can sync it. One push of a button, sync here, that it's both the same, okay? Very simple, I like. Push button down here to change modes. You've got snow, normal, mountain, and I know there's a custom option, and I'm not sure how that works necessarily, but you press the cu custom, it pops up on the display here, and you can configure your custom your custom ride, your custom control there. Right right up here on the steering wheel, I've got lots of controls to use. I can control my volume right here very easily. I can change channels. I've got Bluetooth. Everything, you know, cruise control, everything I need basically, except for climate control, but everything as far as audio and cruise control is right here, push buttons. Um, the buttons, 
They're easy to use. They're right within my thumb's reach here. So that's good. Things, you know, this vehicle is smooth. It, it, it's smooth to drive. The one thing I noticed taking off, not a lot of power. Not a lot of power off of the, once you hit the gas pedal. It's got some lag there. So that, that's interesting and I don't love that. But as far as the ride, it's, it's pretty smooth. Um, again, you know, the things that, that I do like about this vehicle is its simplistic design. Nothing overwhelming. Uh, at the same time, that can be a bad thing. Some people are looking for things that are really different about this vehicle features that are different that make it stand out from from others there's nothing that really makes it stand out but you know it's comfortable it's it's for it's it's for a family that's just looking for a, a good value in a vehicle a good value in a third row vehicle we've already talked about the cubic space behind the third row that's good easy to get in and out of good leg room back there so you know it's comfortable it's it's a pretty good drive nothing that overwhelms you got your usb ports that's becoming more standard in a lot of vehicles everybody needs those so some good things about this vehicle again like i said though there's there aren't any features on this that really pop out at you but if you're looking for just a, a good vehicle you know this isn't a bad way to go pricing is good you, again we've got three different options as far as the engine goes. You've got a four cylinder, 2.0 liter that does um, 18 uh, city, 23 highway. Uh, sorry, 20 city, 23 highway. The six cylinder varies a little bit between the four wheel drive and the all wheel drive. This is the all wheel drive version. In the all wheel drive, you're looking at 17 in the city, 21 highway. That gas mileage, it could be better. It's not great for the size of a vehicle. Uh, there's definitely ones that, that do a little bit better. The gas mileage in here isn't great. It could be better. So pricing, there's a few different options in this, in, in a few different trim options of this vehicle. You've got your S, which is the low, the base model, the SE, which is one this this one is, the SE is available with a technology package. That techn technology package has a heads-up display, so that that would be really nice. I think a lot more vehicles are going to start going towards the heads-up display. Right now, you obviously got to pay more for that. Um, it's becoming not necessarily standard, but it is becoming standard in more of your luxury vehicles. For your for your mid-priced vehicles, obviously it's an option you have to pay more for. It's twenty-five hundred dollars more in this vehicle. Then you you've got the uh, SEL and then the SEL Premium. The S model starts at thirty-one thousand five forty-five, so just under thirty-two thousand. The SE is about thirty-four thousand five hundred, and then your SE Premium, I'm just going up to the top, you can be about fifty thousand dollars. Had some extra features. Um, so again, you know, your lane keeping assist and all those different driving features that come that you can spend more for. Those are some nice features. So it just depends what you're looking for. This one again, the SE is your is one. It's it's just a step above the base model, but for thirty five thousand dollars, it's not a bad price. This vehicle, the uh, the Atlas can tow depending on which one you get, can tow up to. 5,000 pounds. All in all, not a bad vehicle. There are a lot of options on the market. I definitely suggest you take a look at the, at the options you have and find out which one drives best for you and suits your family and fits in your budget. Yeah.